once we start dealing with collision, we start getting a few more vocabularies as well. For instance, this time they specifically talk about the two satellites collide elastically. And what they mean by elastical collision is that the total kinetic energy before is equal to the total kinetic energy after the collision. In this case, no energy was lost during the collision. So when we talk about elastic collision or inelastic collision, there's a statement about the amount of kinetic energy in the system. But in all collisions, momentum will still be conserved and in many cases constant because the external forces are insignificant. And in this case, this is definitely the case because both the satellites here are floating in space. So let's draw a picture of my time one and time two before and after the collision. They give us a relative speed. So then we have our choice of choosing whatever non-accelerating frame. So we're gonna explicitly choose a frame where satellite A is not moving. So VA1 is equal to zero to begin with. So then we can draw it like this. A, this is a satellite, but I'm just using a ball-like thing. VA1 is equal to zero as defined. And so B having a relative velocity of 0.25 must be heading towards A, otherwise you wouldn't get a collision. And if we're gonna define X positive to be that way, we're gonna say this is negative 0.25. The two masses are given as such. So this is my A mass and that's my B mass, just to keep things in, uh, in line here. And then time two, likely, though we're not always guaranteed, VA is gonna bounce off backwards. We don't know how big. And VB2, probably is going to bounce back the other way that it came from. It is still possible that B2 can continue on at a slower speed, but we'll assume it like that for now and then we'll see how it all works out. Like I was saying before, the conservation momentum is always true. So this statement is always going to be useful. Though again, like I was saying that this is going to be zero in the case of most collision and definitely in this case, there's no external forces acting. These are vectors, but again, everything happens in one dimension, so we can just deal with one dimension at a time. We have multiple bodies, so we have MAVA1. Oh, sorry, I forgot to make a chart, but in this case, the chart isn't very useful because we have so many unknowns. In initially, we have zero, then negative 0.25, and then this is just VA2 and VB2. We don't know how big it is. Okay, then we have MB1 B is equal to MAVA2 plus MBVB2. All vectors, but one of these is zero, as we have to find it. Unfortunately, we have no clue about these two things. So we have to actually go in and employ this relationship that relates beginning speed and ending speed to hopefully get another equation to solve for things. So from here, let's isolate one of these in terms of the other. Let's say we isolate VA2. VA2 would be one subtracting this over, all divided by MA, and just to make things look a little neater, MB will factor out the MB, and again, these vector signs stays around, so we'll sub in the whole negative later on. Okay, so we have VA2. Then we employ the fact that it is an elastic collision. So sum of KE1 is equal to sum of KE2, where we can say satellite A has a certain amount of kinetic energy in the beginning and so like B likewise, and then in the end, notice again that for energy, it's a scalar, it's squared, doesn't matter what direction we're moving in. This is again zero, and then we can sub this in for VA2. 
There's a few things we can factor out. Let's use a different color. The one half can go away for now, and then we'll sub in, and there's a few more things we can clean up, so. Let's expand the square into this. Uh, this eventually, we have to do the uh, foil thing because we can't just stick the square in like that with this negative sign. M A and then M B square, M A square, B one square minus two, B B one, V B two, plus V B two square, plus M B V B two square. So this M A cancel with the one of the M A underneath, and then there's M B's happening everywhere, so that can go away too collecting like terms and since the only unknown we have left now is vb2 it seems like we're going to need the quadratic formula so we'll collect things in terms of vb2 so we have vb2 squared and that will have this term plus the thing in the back so it's mb over ma plus one minus 2vb1 vb2 multiplied by mb over ma and then finally we have vb1 square which doesn't belong with any vb2 so we have this guy so we have mb over ma it's a plus by the way subtracting this guy so we have minus one like that it's all equal to zero so now we can basically have our quadratic formula set up let's sub these numbers in and again don't forget that we have to use the negative sign for my vb1 it's the middle term that really matters all equal to zero. So in terms of the quadratic formula, we have my a, oops, forgot, negative sign, negative sign, positive, a, b, and c. So then using our quadratic formula, we will get two answers. One of which looks very familiar, actually. <laughs> this particular answer is implying that if there is no collision involved, then there's no change. And yes, the energy will stay the same because there's no change. But that's not what we're interested in. We want, we want the collision to happen. So that's the one we're using. Then the A2 we can work out is equal to what we had before, which is MB over MA v b1 minus v b2 and that's v a and notice how both of these ended up negative so in fact what actually happened afterwards as they finished colliding is a is moving back with a fairly big velocity but B is also moving back, quote unquote, with, with a much smaller velocity. So B being heavier, A bounced off of B, but B keeps on moving with a little bit of a slowdown. But that's not the final, final end of the question. They specifically want the relative velocity afterwards, which we can take as the absolute value of VB minus VA. which ends up quite simple but we do have to f go through all the steps to find it so this here 0.25 meters per second is the relative velocity after the collision so this is another conservation of momentum question but with two unknowns where the second equation to use comes from the keyword elastic which implies that my initial kinetic energy 
stays exactly the same and becomes my final kinetic energy. No energy is lost. That's what elastic collision means.